Joe Kitchen at Sea. We partnered with Food and Wine Magazine a few years back to install these kitchens on all 15 of our ships. And the purpose is to bring our chefs out of the main galley and to show you some tips and tricks. And it's interactive. Feel free to ask any questions to the chef that may come up. And also, we like to show you uh, some different recipes, things you can do at home, not too difficult, uh, hopefully, for you to try based on the region that we're traveling to. So we call it our On Location program. And my name is Kirsten, and I'm part of the location team under our cruise director, Michael. So we want to show you some different Greek recipes, and there's lots of wonderful food to be had in Greece and Turkey as well. Who was with us last week on the Rhinedam? A lot of you. So how was the food last week? Are you hungry? Yeah. No. OK. So the goal is to send you home a lot bigger than you are right now. <laughs> And I think we'll be okay with doing that. So I cannot do this alone. I'm not a professionally trained chef, but I love learning all the tricks of the trade. So with us, we have our very own show chef from the main galley. Will you please give a very warm welcome to our chef, Mauricio. Hello. <laughs> welcome on board. What is this? Look these, at this. These are my notes. <laughs> notes. No. My cheating notes about the recipe no, today. That's good. Hello. Welcome on board. New, cr new cruise here or not? We have about half half people returning and half the people came on yesterday. Somebody speak Spanish? No one. Buenos dias, Mauricio. No, you're not, <laughs> no, you don't count. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> you don't count. You're from United States. That's right. Anyone? I'm from Chile, by the way. South America. Well, Very far hopefully away. Hopefully if there's no Spanish speakers in here, there's also no one from Chile. Look, look, picture, picture. Oh. oh. Smile. Okay. You want That's our enough. picture and we haven't even done anything yet. All right. Okay. We have, you have the recipe on your hands, I, ho I hope you have it. Yeah. yeah. Good boy. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. No, 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 no. <laughs> you may take that home. <laughs> yeah, you can go. So we have a very simple dishes today. Yeah, you're going to see it. And like always, my partner here say, between $5 and $20 is only there. The garnish. <laughs> the garnish, that's it. So We'll show you how to plate it really well, too. We have some, we're going to make some sauce, tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. So we heat it. We have two pans. This is for the fish. We're going to seal it. Why we seal it? Please tell Why me. Why do we seal the fish? Yeah. To keep what inside? Moisture, yes. Yeah. We want to seal right. it and then finish it in the oven. You also, you can put it straight to the oven. You make the sauce, you put the sauce on top, and you cook it on the oven. But you're going to lose all the juice of the fish. And it's going to be dry and flaky? Yeah. Not in a good way? No, in a good way. Another picture, another picture. So, okay. Cheer. This could take all day. Okay. So this recipe, we should mention before we start the fish too, can be made with many different kinds of fish or Any chicken. Kind of or chicken. Like they say, is mm -hmm. it here, say something here? Or uh, maybe. Yeah. Yep. yeah, it's here. You can use it for, you can use the, make the sauce and you can frozen. You can keep it in the fridge for a few days. So mm -hmm. if you have, um, I don't you know. You can try the sauce with different things. Yeah, for also you can use it, for example, you do it in the, in the middle of the week and you use it in the weekend. Correct. Correct. Wonderful. I love your accent. I have a strong <laughs> accent, a Spanish accent. I'm sorry. But it's okay. You understand me, yeah? Yes. Okay. I don't understand what you say. Yes? Yes. Okay. See. Si. So we... See! Si. Perfectly. We put some oil. So we're going to start building the sauce. Yeah. And I should mention, too, that all these beautiful little tiny cups up here are called your mise en place. Has anyone ah, heard that okay. term That's before? Mise en place means put in place. It's a Put French cooking term, and it means preparing all of your ingredients and all of your tools before you start cooking. So that saves tons of time going back into the pantry and the fridge when you get everything all set to go just like this. Yeah. And you've even pre-chopped stuff, so it will save time with that. Okay, you may begin. Okay. <laughs> onion. <laughs> Very strong oil. Okay. So we have white onion. White onion. You can use, you can use whatever onion you want because we're going to... Oh. What do you call the size of this uh, chopping? Chop it onion. Why you, you don't have to be regular because we want to finish. I have some here, make it. You don't gonna see it. If you see the onion on on your sauce, for example, you make a ver blanc or ver rouge. You need the onion very nice, cut it here. You need them cut really small. Yeah, really, really small. But here, no, you don't need it. It's you just chop it. Also, you can put. Remember, I don't know if you have one on the last cruise or not. Mm -hmm. Also, you can use it. Uh, you put some water in the blender. You peel the onion, you put it inside, and just pulse the... Pulse the blender? Pulse the blender, you're going to have chopped onion. Also, you can keep it on the freezer 
frozen and so you can use it like a base for so what, what you're saying is you don't have to worry about chopping the onion too mm. too small because too it's going to cook down yeah. in the sauce that's right wonderful we have some garlic and onion and we're starting with that and you have to turn the heat down when you put the garlic in right yeah why why i told you already why because we don't want to burn the garlic right? perfectly so and this process you put a little oil in the pan too right yeah they pan it put it and when we started we put some oil and who knows what it's called when you start the onions and garlic and you want them to become clear or translucent clear and translucent you go if to the gym see, I, I to give you some color wait, here i'm testing them to sweat it out, yes. Okay. So you want to sweat the onions. You don't want them to turn brown and caramelized. Don't be afraid. Yeah. I'm always your friend I just with have you. to make sure everybody learns something. Yeah, you have <laughs> to learn. They say translucent. I don't. I give you a little color. A little you know, color. A little color. I give it. The recipe says say translucent. Why do I give you a little color? Because I like the taste of the garlic a little toasted. I do too. You too. Mm -hmm. so, so it's that's okay. Way. That's that's it's okay. We put tomato. So he started with high heat and then turned it down. Yeah. Tomatoes. Our diced tomatoes. Yeah. Also, you can chop it more, you know, more bigger than he this. Yeah. Yeah. It'll cook down faster the smaller you chop it, right? Yeah. But the point is, you can keep the sauce on the fire, you know, very low, and you can go to do another thing. I don't know, buy a beer or <laughs> drink that's a the beer. First thing, that's the first thing you would do if you were starting your tomato sauces. You know when I cook my... Well, I'm tired of already chopping this stuff. I yeah, need yeah, a beer. Yeah. I take a beer. Okay. Always I take a beer. Okay. You know? Oh, also, okay, you can bring some milk. Okay. Whatever. Whatever. Whatever you want. It's Depend not even 12 o'clock yet. <laughs> it's okay. It's it's no, okay. because in my country it's 3 o'clock in the morning so I can go to party. Perfect. Because... Have a question, sir? Great question. He asked, do you peel the tomatoes before you chop them and put them in the sauce? No. No. I take only the end. Look, the pinnacle green manager. Oh, yes. Roger in the back yeah. here. This is I our think it was a security guard, but no. Our it's a Roger <laughs> from the pinnacle green. He's a friendly face. Yeah. From India. Somebody from India here? No? Yeah. yeah. Look at this. Plenty. Okay, okay. So we did not peel the tomatoes. No, we don't That's peel the tomatoes. The skin will cook down, right? That's yes. why. Yes. So there's no need to take the time to do we that. We have some chopped oregano. Oregano. Yeah, fresh. They say the, the recipe say dry or dry or fresh. I use the fresh. I like the fresh. You always prefer fresh yeah, herbs, of right? Of course. Of course, always prefer the fresh. Always. Now, who knows where oregano comes from? I don't know. From the the Mediterranean, yes, in general. Uh, the name is Greek, and it means joy of the mountain. Perfect. Are yeah, you it's here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, I <laughs> promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. No, it's not. Uh, I was surprised of her. No, no, no. I, right out. I like to do my research. Yeah, of course. So oregano is related to mint, marjoram, thyme. Yeah. And it's very pungent. You have to use it with caution. You don't want to over, overdo it with the oregano. And you also put some fresh chopped parsley in there. Chopped parsley. parsley. And sun. Chilean red wine. No, it's a lie, but I like to say it's Chilean. It's okay. Some fake it's Chilean Italian red wine. wine. Yeah. Now, what type of red wine is that? Uh, dry. Dry red dry. wine. Dry. Yeah. And so, in this point, if you don't have a, a good tomato sauce, we make the sauce here. You know, I, I is telling from him a little bit. Okay? It's not um, it's, um, it's not sour. It's, so, you have some put some already put some sugar here inside when they cook it. When you put some uh, uh, wine or vinegar in any kind of food you make with hot, you can put some a little sugar on, on inside, a little bit, just a little bit. Just a little bit? Just a little bit. And why would you do that? For the acidity. For the acidity. To cut I the acidity of the vinegar? Yeah, n yeah, the vinegar or wine. This is wine. Or the wine. Okay, I don't put it because it's a very good sauce, this one. So I only have to reduce the wine here, okay? So is this homemade tomato sauce? Homemade by the saucier, you know where the... Oh, we have a saucier. Everyone yeah. in the galley here on the Rhinedam has their own particular job. duty and job. Yeah. Nobody can do so anything. So we have one guy in charge of just sauces. We have a soup guy. We have a fish guy. We have... Garde Manger. This is mm -hmm. old-fashioned ship, you know. It's and the other ship they call hot galley, cold galley. And that's it. Simple like that. Here you have the saucier, garde manger, entre metier. Yes, it's, it's a very the old. old I love it. I love it. You it's know, the it's traditional like French uh, brigade system. Yeah, with all the French names. And your name, I should Mauricio. mention. 
Mauricio, yes. Okay. Uh, but uh, your title <laughs> in the galley is Tornant. Welcome, welcome, please. We were waiting for you. Welcome. So, so his title is Tornant, which is T-O-U-R-N-A-N-T. And that means you tour the galley, and it's his job to check up on all the departments, all of the individuals working, make sure they're staying on track and that yeah. they're following recipes, that and their plating is right. And one of my job is stay with you. And yeah. of course, to come visit me in here. Okay, so we reduce a little bit of So that wine is already cooked down. Yeah, a little bit. We need al at least 25 minutes in this, in this kind of uh, food because the tomatoes. Okay, we have to take out all the acidity of the tomato with the with the heating. Okay. Okay, we have here uh, Kalamata olives. Mm -hmm. Where from? You have some. Where are Kalamata olives from? Greece. Yes, Kalamata, Greece. Let, let me read. Let me if we can. Do. They're purple. Now they're almond shape. Ah, okay, okay. And okay. they range in size from one half inch to one inch. Ah, uh, perfectly. So we have these three kind of thing. They gave you the name of the of the sauce. Yes. So what um, do we do if we don't have capers and olives? You don't, don't put it inside because you don't have. Simple <laughs> like that. Make it without. <laughs> well, that's an easy answer. Yeah, that's an easy answer. Well, you, you can, you know, you put uh, different kind. You can put some veg inside, like zucchini or eggplant. Mm -hmm. We call them berenjena. I love that name, berenjena. Berenjena? No, no, no. No, nope, not you, even you close. You don't have the touch. Aubergine, eggplant. Eggplant, whatever you want. So for, this the, point, for the okay? Kalamata olives... Uh, yeah. You could also, of course, substitute different kinds of olives, right? Any kind of Does olive. anyone in here not like Kalamata olives? They're a little bit different because they're usually soaked in a red wine vinegar brine rather than olives can be... I don't like the Kalamata olives. You don't like the... Oh, no. But don't tell no one. So I tell people it's not that you don't like the olives. It's that you probably don't like the brine that they come from. No, the, some olives, they're good. But this is a little... I don't know. Are they too... Uh, mm, I don't know. They... Mm. they it's okay. Well, let's put them in anyway. <laughs> it's okay. We're going to put it because it's on the recipe, okay? Okay. So, we have in this point, you have the base of your sauce, okay? And you can use homemade tomato sauce, canned tomatoes, you know, we, we peel it already, mm -hmm. the small one. Mm -hmm. All the sauce already made it in the, you buy it in the supermarket, you know, you have some tomato sauce. Yes. But this is homemade tomato sauce. I don't put just yet the, these three kind of ingredients. Our sun-dried tomatoes, capers, and olives. Okay, so we're going to put only the tomato sauce. Okay. okay. Why we don't put it? Because the capers and the sun-dried tomato, they, if you take too, if, it, if this cook too much, they're going to blow up. I don't know, they, they're broken and it's not... They're going to break apart and lose yeah, their... break apart, you see? That's why you're their here. consistency. So, we're going to chop out a little bit the... The, the sun-dried sun tomatoes. tomatoes. Okay. Yeah. You don't need to chop so fast like me, but. <laughs> now you're also not going to necessarily add lots of salt to this sauce because nothing. of. I don't put nothing of salt yet. Because the olives and capers have lots uh, of salt uh, in so them, good. right? She's so good. Okay, you come here and uh, on the next, the next um, demonstration. Yes, I'll be on the next cruise, that's for sure. No, no, cruise. <laughs> oh, look. Oh, is there a pit? Yeah, oh, I find catch. you. Good catch. They're supposed to be pitted, aren't they? Yeah. So yes, we have another. That's why I don't like the Kalamata olives, you see? Okay. Because they're dangerous. Yeah. That's right. So we do have another cooking show today at one o'clock. We're <laughs> making, instead of Greek food, we're making two recipes from our Pinnacle Grill restaurant. Uh, we're making lobster salad and creme brulee for dessert, right? From Le Cirque. And we may or may not have samples of creme brulee for everyone who comes. Okay. Okay. So we throw the olives in there. Olives. And it's still cooking, okay? And the purpose of putting the tomato sauce in is just to add liquid to it, right? Uh, liquid, yeah. Also, yeah, it's a good. That's a good question. Ah, uh, you have uh, applause. If you put <laughs> more tomatoes, and you don't like so liquid, this one, uh -huh. all th this base you can use it on the on the fish. So that was a good question. Okay, so we have to stop to um, to keep um, cooking this one for 10, 15 minutes more. Okay. But we don't have that time. No, we don't. Because on TV. No, 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 no lie. So okay. it's on a low temperature for that time. Yeah. Okay. So I, I still don't have any kind of salt there. Okay? And pepper also. If you don't like the pepper, don't use it. Simple like that. Because it's too spicy or whatever. And for the capers, would you add those right at the end? Right in there. I'm going to put it now. Yeah. We're going to still cooking. Who knows here? what capers are? 
I don't know. They're flower buds, yeah. They come from a little bush native to the Mediterranean. And they are also soaked in a brine solution, yeah. softened. And it's often really, really salty. So I usually rinse my capers off with water before using them and let them dry. You can also toast them and have them a little bit crunchy yes. before you throw them in. And they come in a whole different variety of sizes, too. Some of them as big as like your thumb and some of them teeny tiny like this. Okay, we have here. Oh, we have samples starting to come out for everyone. Good. Mm -hmm. The thing we're going to make is the, what we're going to serve here, okay? Okay, so we have halibut here. Halibut, fresh halibut. Where is from the halibut? I don't know, but I want to... You we know. have lots of halibut in Alaska. I know Alaska? some of you are from Alaska. Okay. And in the Pacific Northwest, where I'm from. Okay. But again, you can do this recipe with pretty much any kind of fish, right? Yeah. The sauce can go with... Yes. yes. At room temperature? Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a good question. So fish, are, is your question specifically about fish, whether that's okay? So she's read or heard about having your fish out at room temperature before cooking it or different kinds of protein. Is it important? Yeah, yeah. Always you have to, you know, rest the meat. All the kind of meat you, you, you use, you have to rest a little bit at room temperature, 15 in 20 minutes, depend of the food. If it's, it's fish a little, and the chicken is a little dangerous, okay? Yeah. Yeah, but also, uh, that's why it was on the on the fridge. But you can put it outside for a few minutes, so the all the meat is gonna be more tender when you cook it. The fish and the chicken, you don't need it. It's more for the lamb and beef. The red meats? Yeah. Okay. So we have a pan with mm -hmm. oil. We We're gonna put some salt. And pepper. And we have extra virgin olive oil, right? Yeah, a little bit Kay. over there. Salt and pepper. All right. Okay. And you like to use that coarse grain salt, right? Yeah, I like it. Why? Why? I don't know. <laughs> Just because. But I like it. Most chefs prefer kosher salt or yeah, coarse grain sea salt because it's easier to control with their hands. Yeah, yeah. The table salt is, you know, in I don't like because you cannot measure very, very, very well. Mm -hmm. Okay. It also doesn't have any additives. It's just pure salt, right? It's pure salt. So, so we are going to seal the fish. Yeah. So you can see a little bit of smoke over here. A little bit of smoke coming off the oil. Yeah. So this is the time to put the... So is this frying temperature? Yeah, very high temperature. High temperature. Yeah. So S what do we have here? I start to say it. You see the skin. No problem with that. You can keep it on the recipe uh, when you serve it. Or you can take out. You can take out uh, in the fish room when you bite it. Uh -huh. Or now when we turn it, mm -hmm. and we'll be, we're going to be very easy. You're going to see it. So he's going to show us an easy way to take the skin off. Yeah, of course. A Sometimes it can be really hard to take off before you start cooking it, right? Sometimes it's hard. So these are pretty thick, a uh, couple inch, couple inch thick like pieces of you fish. You know why? Because if it's too, it's too thin. Uh, it takes too, too less time to, you know, to go on, on temperature, so sometimes mm -hmm. it can be overcooked. And this kind of fish is so big, so you, you can uh, fill it up, fill it in, in, the, in the oven, what you're going to make. So only we seal it for one side. Okay. So is this the same halibut that's served in the Pinnacle Grill? Yeah, the same halibut. Yes, there's an entree on the Pinnacle menu for yeah. cedar plank halibut, right? Okay, we want to give you more. A few more minutes. So you're checking on the color there? Yeah, underneath? of course. Okay. I like the brownie color. Okay. So we have already... So we have our sauce that you made earlier today. Yeah. And also I didn't put this one. Oh yeah, we forgot our spices. Cinnamon. And that one is? Cinnamon? No, that, that was a cinnamon. That's why it's all spices. What does it mean the all spices? Is it a kind of many, many spices or not? All spice. Who knows what all spice comes from? More food trivia for you. Who thinks it's a combination of spices? No, good. No hands went up. It is from a specific plant. It's an evergreen pimiento tree, and it's a, it's a berry from that tree. It's a little tiny pea-sized berry that they dry out and ground, and it tastes and smells like a combination of cinnamon, nutmeg, and clove. 
Yeah. And I used to think it was just a combination of those spices, but no. It's from a tree. Really? Yep. So we put that in the sauce, right? Yeah, on the sauce. Okay. I put it in this sauce. Okay. So look at the color of the fish there. You see, it's just you can nice give it more color or less color. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, it's depend of your taste. And if you want more crunchy, the, sh the fish, you give it more color. But again, there was nothing on the fish except salt and pepper. So salt that's and just pepper. That's the it. flesh nothing of else. the fish. So you're looking way. at... So you're actually p propping it up on its side there to seal the side as well. Yeah, the side is over here. Just for a nice presentation. I'm going to uh, help with nothing else. You see, let me check if the skin will get And then out. the skin should yeah. just peel off very see, easily. Look. See that? Very easy. You see? There we go. Beautiful. You know, my can I told you before, I don't know if it was here. My country, the... The skin of the of the fish salmon. No, the salmon because we have a lot of salmon in my country. They make some wallet, shoes, sandals out of salmon skin. Yeah. Do they I'm eat not it joking, too? Eh? It's real. Do they eat salmon skin? Mm, no, not me, but some people yeah. Oh, in Seattle we have fried salmon skin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you have two choices here. You okay. Change uh, in um. In any kind of uh, metal pans. Yep. O also, if you have this kind of handle of the pan. With a metal handle? Yeah. You can put it just straight to the oven. So we're going to put the whole pan in the oven? Yeah, all pan in the oven. No plastic so on that pan? No. No, nothing. So you can check the it's still raw inside, okay? And you can tell that by I how don't soft know if it is? you can see it over here. It's still raw inside. So, so you can fill it with your finger. You know, if you have the, you know, the medium well, medium well, medium well, me you have here in your hand. If you put two finger here, this is rare. Right on the, mm. the yes. bump of your yeah, thumb? Yeah, yeah. Take it. Oh, you no, put your there? finger? I'm sorry, I put some oil there. Oh, that's, that's okay. okay. It's Moisturizing. Beautiful. Yeah. And if you put, don't brush too much. Just so you feel right where okay. that. Okay. And then you change it. Oh, that's right. And then you have a medium so your pointer finger, that's, yeah, your pointer that's finger. medium what? Medium This well? is rare. This is rare. With your pinky. Medium rare, medium, medium well. Medium well. You see, you can Everybody check get that. when you have a barbecue outside. And you can, so you, let me check. It's perfect. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we put some. So we're going to put this in the oven with some sauce right on top of the fish. Right on top of the fish. And we that'll, little, yeah. that'll bake really nice. Yeah, very nicely. So have you let the sauce come down to room temperature? Is that okay? Yeah, it's perfectly. Okay. If it's on the fridge, they're going to be more sticky for the oil. Okay, you use olive oil. You you have, you have put sometimes the olive oil inside the fridge. You never yep. do it. But if you put it, it's going to be solid, the olive oil. But it's okay to put olive oil in the fridge. Yeah, yeah, it's perfectly. So we put it now on the oven. In this point, you can put some cheese on top. We have some feta cheese for garnish only. But also, if you put the feta cheese on top and you put it on the oven, it's going to be very, very beautiful. Or any kind of cheese, Parmesan cheese, mm -hmm. cheddar cheese. Mm -hmm. You can put the pan of the cheese you like it. So we put it a little bit on the oven. So in it goes. Five five minutes is, is more than enough. So you can also finish with the cheese on top after? Cheese on top, depend of you. If Crumble you have feta. some other kind of cheese, I don't know, you're from, I don't know, Netherlands or France, you can put some brie or whatever. <laughs> Depend on, depend on the kind of fish you want. So we have this. With feta know, cheese. You never have this kind of plates on your house. But it's cheap to buy two or three or six and you can make a different between a, you know, typical dinner. Mm -hmm. And a fancy dinner. And a fancy dinner. Yes. You can find it in any place. So why know. is plating so important? Uh, because the food always going to be good. You know, when you make it with love, everything you can eat. If it, it looks good, it tastes better, right? It tastes better. You they've know? they've done studies that actually show they've tried tests on two different groups where they serve food family style and then they serve the exact same food prepared the exact same in individual plates with some care taken in the plating and they all rated the taste much much better on the plated plated food even though it was the same. So you know one five six dollar you can buy a one one of these plates. You know, you don't have to buy the, you know, England plate or whatever. So the key is to have a large white plate, right? White plate. Always white. Also, if you have some black also, 
uh, this kind of plate. You can mm -hmm. use it black, but in that kind of plate, it's like a painting. When it's, it's white, you can put all the colors on top. It's your canvas. Yeah. If it's black, you have to find some color you can shine it on the plate. Yellow, browns. So you have to be a little artist to make a foot, but yes. not too much. So does anyone have any questions at this point while we wait for yes, our fish to finish? There, nice and loud. Oh, that's a good question. Are you going to give any tours in the kitchen? There may be one at the end of the cruise, but I'm not positive because we're in port. So if there is one, it'll be on the last day probably. And I'll double check on that for you. And With also the powers the that be. you can put, uh, you know, I want to make a uh, kitchen uh, guide yeah. tour. So yeah. I go with you. Good question. This recipe doesn't say how many it serves for this size of the sauce. Now it calls for five ripe tomatoes. So I think it's a smaller portion, maybe four yeah. to six. The sauce could maybe go for four to six people. Yep. Still not ready to fish. How so about question right here? A copy. The recipe. Oh, we've got extra recipes on the table right by the door there for on anyone. The how are the samples? Yeah? Good. The sauce Wonderful. was good. I made the sauce. Yes. You made the sauce. Yes. So I have here some pesto. You can buy in the supermarket. You can mm -hmm. make it. Okay. If you don't have pine nuts, don't worry. Just put some walnuts or some whatever you want inside. So you're going to use this for the plating? Yeah, just a little bit. You're going to see it. So uh, I put some olive oil mm -hmm. to make it more liquid. If you put some water also, you can use it. Why? Because the leaves of the, bay li uh, the basil, mm -hmm. they have some water inside, so they're going to be separated. It's already mixture here. But I put the oil because you're going to see it. That is beautiful. Did you make that pesto? No. No. <laughs> I won't tell anyone. Okay. Okay. But it's just you and me, okay? Okay. Don't so it's anyone. basil, garlic, pine nuts, yeah. olive oil, cheese. and parmesan. Parmesan yes. cheese. That's important. Don't forget the cheese. That's but you important. said you can use walnuts instead of uh, pine nuts? Pine nuts or whatever nuts you have. Even peanuts, whatever the nuts you have. All you use, if you know, is for the crunch. Of course, the pine nuts have another flavor. You toast it. It's a different thing. But mm -hmm. always you can fix it, your sauce, what you have in your hands. You don't have to, you know, buy all the In your items. hands or in your pantry. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Really. Yeah, okay, so good. what are you going to do with this pesto? We're going to put some pesto over there here. Okay. We have some oregano, fresh oregano. You put we're gonna for put the garnish. Top. Also, what is, you can put it here with rice. You can use it with rice also. Mm -hmm. With pasta, of yes. course. Of course, you can make a pasta, a nice pasta. Any kind of pasta, you can make it fresh one or dry one. Depend of your tasting, what you like. You like the spaghetti? Don't put the spaghetti now. Like this okay. You so are you going to start... Are you going to start painting first or put the fish on no, first? No, no. I have to put the fish first. Okay. Well, this then let's the get the fish out of there. It's almost it's lunchtime. Perfectly. These people are going to start leaving. <laughs> okay. See you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We finished already. Okay. So we have here a spatula. We have the fish. You can see it's hot. It's hot. Hot. Yeah, it's hot. We played in. Okay. A good chef has leathery hands, right? That are immune, no, no, no. immune it's to hot. hotness. It's hot, but it's okay for me. It's okay I take for some me. Hottest thing on the kitchen. Also, I work on the galley inside. Okay, we have only. So we okay. keep the plate clean. Clean. Okay. And we're going to paint with the pesto. Yeah. You can put the pesto on top. Mm -hmm. Or you can do something like that. Okay. You're doing the drop and swoosh, I like to call. <laughs> yeah. How you call it? Drop and swoosh. Drop so you and put a, little, a little pesto on each side. Okay, yes. Which you gives the person the option whether they want to put it on their fish yeah. or not. Yeah, the feta cheese, and you know, it's very salty. I don't put any salt on this sauce where you're tasting. This is mm -hmm. the same we have here. I don't have any salt inside. Nothing. It was salty a little bit. Yeah. You just seasoned the fish a little bit with salt, but Nothing no else. salt added to the, to the sauce because feta has a high salt content because it's also done in a brine. Mm -hmm. It's like pickled cheese, right? Yes, and we have some oregano. You can and use any kind of or, uh, oregano you want, okay? Thyme, basil, or whatever. Just, you know, a little tip. What are you doing with the olive oil? I'm just shiny. You're going to dip the fresh herbs in the olive oil? That's it, simple like that. For garnishing? Yeah. 
just to add a little shine to it. Yeah, nothing else. Okay, so now you have a beautiful fish with caper sauce and olives. Gorgeous. Okay, and some pesto. We put some pesto. You can make also the pesto you can make with, with rucula. You know what's pesto mean in, in, in Italian? What is a pesto? Where you have a tomato pesto, um, basil pesto, whatever. It's just crush all the herbs. Mm -hmm. That's a pesto in, in Italiano. Italian, Italian side. So you can make a pesto of rucola. Even if you have too many lettuce, you can make a pesto with lettuce. Also, you have uh, the same color. You have the taste is going to be different. Of as course. long as you add garlic oil and cheese to it, it'll taste great. Anything, right? anything <laughs> it tastes good. So, so any fresh you, herb. For example, you buy too many lettuce last weekend, mm -hmm. and you buy uh, some people and don't come. What do they make with the lettuce? Throw a it pesto away. Sauce. Or if you have a rabbit, you give it to the rabbit, of course. But if you <laughs> don't. You can make a pesto with lettuce, all green stuff with tomato. You put the tomato without seeds, okay, without seeds, and you can dry a little bit on the oven. Beautiful. Yeah, you take out the, the, the seeds of the tomato. Yes. You dry a little bit on the oven, mm -hmm. then you put it in a blender, you put garlic, you put, uh, what else? Cheese. Cheese, salt oil. and pepper. Salt obvio. and pepper. Obvio. Olive oil, yes. Olive oil, mm -hmm. and you have a tomato paste. Beautiful. You have any question? You like it or like it? Uh, if you don't like, please don't come back. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we want you all to come back at one o'clock. We're making yeah. our pinnacle grill creme brulee and lobster salad. Also and important to remember, two o'clock is wine tasting. So we'll give you some food and creme brulee, and then we'll give you some wine. I can go. Yes. I can go. Sure. Yes. You don't have anything else to do today, right? Yeah, plenty no. of things. So 2 o'clock wine tasting in the dining room. We've got both of our Pinnacle Grill menus up here if you want to come up and have a look. And we have our finished product here. Let's give Mauricio a big round of applause. Beautiful Thank plating. Thank you. Hi, and Roger. And Roger, our Pinnacle Grill manager, is in the back here, too, if you have any questions or want to make a reservation with him. Whenever. So thank you very much for joining us, everyone. Again, I'm Kirsten and I Mauricio here. I see you at... I'll see you at 1 o'clock, back in here. And if you have any questions for the chef, feel free to come on up. Or if you'd like to snap a photo of the final plating here, you're welcome to do that. Or photo to us. And plenty of, or of us, and plenty of extra recipes by the door as well. So thanks okay, very much, thank everyone. Thank you for coming. And we'll see have you a next nice time. Have nice days. <laughs>